Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding topics. The first one is gonna be about this guy right here, Hassan Mustafa, who just announced that he is done competing for this season at least, but potentially forever. And I'm gonna tell you in a moment why forever, possibly. So what he says here in this post is the off-season officially started, to answer some of the comments I saw in his comment section, no, this was not his off-season. His off-season is starting now, and he says, the time to focus on personal growth and optimal performance overall. Thank you to all the supporters for showing me how blessed I am, and thank you for those with negative feedback for fueling my drive to push past new limits next time I step on stage. Now, I hope the next time he steps on the stage, it's not gonna be because he wants to prove the haters wrong, but it's gonna be because his body is healthy and because he can actually get in contest shape, like he apparently wasn't able to this year. As far as him deciding to stop the season right here and not continue to do the other shows like Tampa, like uh, Texas, like, I don't know, Dubai Pro this weekend and so on, I think it was definitely the right decision because... Based on what I heard, he was actually pushing things quite hard. You know, he has a coach. It's not like he can't figure it out. Like, he has a good coach, Dorian Hamilton. And from what I heard, he was actually eating very little food. Like, very, very little food. And he still wasn't able to get conditioned, to get dry. The other bodybuilders were supportive. They were like, you're gonna nail it the next show. Keep it up. Keep pushing. You're gonna get it right and so on. But I understood they were just trying to be supportive, to seem like they were not hating on him and so on. But really, if a bodybuilder is prepping and the first show they do, they're completely, completely out of shape. And then four weeks later, they're also in horrible condition. Something's gotta be wrong. Something must be wrong. And something was. And you're wondering why. I'm wondering why. What the hell could be the problem? And him and his coach also spoke that there were some issues behind the scenes and we had no idea what that could be. Whether it was like relationship issues, personal issues or like health issues. We had no idea basically. Nothing was discussed. Uh, he didn't say anything. His coach didn't really say anything. People were speculating but we had no real information. However, right after he posted this announcement that uh, he's stopping competing, that his uh, uh, competitive season is over, his former coach, by the way, the only coach that got Hassan in a real condition, AJ Sims, the cement factory, posted Hassan's transformation back in 2022 when he won two pro shows when he was actually lean, you know, stage lean, shredded. He won pro shows and placed well, even with worse conditioning, much worse conditioning, but it was at least decent conditioning. This was the year when he was shredded, but this year, 2024, he wasn't even close to being stage lean. However, this year, 2022, as you can see, his starting point was really out of shape, really out of shape. And in the end, he was shredded. And nobody understood why Hassan stopped working with AJ Sims. I figured there were a couple of possible reasons, like maybe he didn't like the approach that AJ Sims had, maybe it was too hard on him, he didn't want to suffer that much, maybe there was a personal issue, but... Finally, we got kind of a response. So somebody asked, AJ Sims here, what about the internal organs when he was with you? And his reply is, EGFR during Olympia prep wasn't happy about. Suggested to rest and revamp. And EGFR are kidney numbers. So apparently, Hassan's kidneys weren't exactly fine during his Olympia prep back in 2022. And if I remember correctly, AJ Sims did not prep Hassan for that Mr. Olympia. Apparently, he didn't like the EGFR number and he decided that it was better to rest his body. But Hassan pushed through it. He ended up on that Mr. Olympia stage. He competed next year as well, 2023. You know how he did. And finally, this year, things are no longer working uh, the way they should. So, is this the reason? 
Is this health issue the reason why Hassan is not able to get in shape? I mean, every time you see a Hassan Mustafa post, everybody is commenting, why did he stop working with AJ Sims? He was the only guy that got him in shape. And I don't think it's a coincidence that he decided to post this post when Hassan decided to announce his, um, not retirement, but uh, him stopping this uh, competitive season. And usually he wasn't replying to these kind of comments, but now he decided to tell us a little bit of something. So apparently Hassan had kidney issues two years ago, and I'm guessing that's probably why he's not able to, you know, truly push and get in shape, because he's probably unable to do a lot of things, and his body might not be responding the best way possible, because there are apparently some kidney issues. Hopefully this is reversible, and next year he's gonna get healthy, and when or if he comes back, it's gonna be because his body is healthy again, and he's able to push things to the point where he wins pro shows and qualifies and goes to the Mr. Olympia, competes at the highest possible level of bodybuilding, but he can't do that just because he wants to prove the haters wrong. He should do that once his body is willing to do what it needs to do. Whatever you guys think about this situation, tell me down below. Alright, the next thing we got is Mo Fuda, who just won recently the Chicago Pro, and he said that he's gonna do another show, and that show is gonna be Tampa Pro. This weekend, we have Dubai Pro, and the weekend after, we got Tampa, and then Texas, and Mo Fuda is not doing the Dubai Pro, the list is out there, Mo Fuda is not on the list, I don't know about Texas, but now I know, we know, he's gonna be doing the Tampa Pro. Let me show you guys. Look who is here today. From Chicago to Tampa. Tampa. We're doing it, right? Tampa. Two in a row? Two in a row. Two in a row. Back to back. Back to back, we're coming. Inshallah. Inshallah. Alright, so there you go. Now we know. Mo Fura is coming for his second title. And it's most likely going to be him who wins it. I mean, who could really take it away from him? Vlad Sukhorujko is doing the Tampa Pro as well. But we just saw that at Chicago Pro. Even though Vlad was in his absolute best shape of his life, it still wasn't enough against this, this guy, this freak right here. With his shape, with his muscle bellies, with his proportions and, and structure and, and conditioning and everything. It just wasn't enough, and there isn't much Vlad can do, really, in the meantime. I mean, he can't change his shape. He was already 100% done, if you ask me, at Chicago. And Mo Fuda maybe even wasn't. Maybe he wasn't, like, 90%, conditioning-wise, at least. So, I think, even if these guys are very close, or let's say Vlad is 5-10% better than Mo Fuda, conditioning-wise, then he was, I think, 10% better than Mo Fuda at Chicago. But I think Vlad was just uh, drier and sharper and harder... Uh, he just doesn't have the shape, the structure, you know, Vlad's shoulders are a problem, uh, arms as well, uh, like overall, like he, the length of his legs as well compared to his upper body length, so structure-wise, shape-wise, Vlad just doesn't have the best uh, of that, but he can get uh, really conditioned apparently, and uh, he can, he is very big, but it's just not enough. I mean, can things change? Can they give it to Vlad now because he wants the Olympic qualification? I don't know. I mean, I, when I was watching pre-judging of this show, I actually had Vlad winning. But later when I saw better photos and better quality videos, I, I saw why he lost. And even though his back was insane and his conditioning was spot on, the shape from the front is just not close. And Nathan Epler apparently is also doing Tampa Pro. Too small, definitely too small to win a pro show, to beat Mofuda. I don't see that happening. As far as Tim Bodesheim, I don't know. I mean, he did like five shows so far. Is he going to continue competing until he gets the Mr. Olympic qualification? I don't know, but uh, can he beat Mofuda? Well, maybe. Mofuda is a little bit off and he is on and Vlad is also off because when Vlad is on, he beats Tim. So I don't know if I can see Tim winning this. I think Mofuda is definitely the favorite, even though he already won one show. But maybe somebody else jumps in, who we don't know about at this point. For example, I know John De La Rosa was originally planning on doing Tampa, but recently they didn't announce anything. And Patrick posted some videos of, of John. He is definitely getting in condition, he's definitely prepping for something. I just don't know if it is uh, Tampa Pro for sure, 
But it could be, it very well could be. And Patrick here says uh, that last bit of fluffiness has started to come off, last bit. So he's getting ready for the stage. The first part, I'm not sure what he wanted to say, a little fury. Maybe he wanted to say a little fluffy, but the last bit of fluffiness, he, he started to come off, I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it could be John that does the show. And if he does the show, and if he's 100% on, you know, it could be him that takes the win. He placed fourth at the Arnold Classic, so he is definitely the kind of bodybuilder that needs to be on the Mr. Olympia stage. He needs this qualification, so I think that's gonna give him a slight advantage, and he's actually really good. And his strongest point probably is his back, which is Mufura's weakest point. So if anybody can challenge Mufura at this show at Tampa Pro, it is John De La Rosa, and he was the favorite to win this show back when he announced he was gonna do it, like after the Arnold Classic, and now we have Mofura, who is also one of the favorites, so I think it's gonna be between these two guys, if John does this show, I think he's gonna do it, and if he does it, and if he is on, it's probably gonna be him who wins it. But it would be a great battle, I think, between uh, John De La Rosa and Mofura, whoever you guys think would win it, tell me down below. Alright, now we also got some Dubai Pro updates, we got a physique update from Nathan Diasha, two days out, this was posted by some uh, dungeon gym in Dubai, where Nathan trained and uh, posed after the training, and take a look at him right here, I mean, he's definitely bringing good conditioning, good hardness, uh, is he gonna be full the way he was at the last show he did? I mean, here he doesn't look that full, but this is like three days out, which is usually the point when guys are the most depleted. I mean, he was blasting full that last show he did. He was super, super full, super big and round, and I think that's what he needs to bring again if he wants to win. And I know they, they, they are aware of that. I mean, they're going to probably push for it, try it, try to bring him as conditioned and as full at the same time, because if he's not full, look at his legs right here. They are definitely starting to show the signs of aging. Usually this happens with older bodybuilders. Not that Nathan is old, but he's not. Uh, he's comp he has been competing for a long, long time now. And I think his legs are kind of taking the toll. Uh, and they're starting to look a little bit flatter, especially the outer sweep. It was never really his strongest point, his legs. But I think now it's showing more than usual. And he can hide it, he can definitely not show this if he's super full, when he's blasting full, his legs are also round, so he needs to bring the fullness up, way up from this point, which I'm sure they're gonna do easily, and uh, once he peaks properly, can he really, like, can he push for the title, can he win this show? I mean, anything is possible, really, because William Bonac, Bekru Stabani, and Nathan Diasha, they basically all beat each other. And we have an addition of Nexilla. We don't know how Nexilla will do. He is my favorite, yeah, but he's a wild card. We haven't seen him on stage this year. We saw these three guys. We know what they can bring. And in my opinion, right now, this is my prediction. Anything can happen, really, we know. But I think, really, for the title, it's not gonna be Nathan Diasha. I think it's more likely to be Bekru Stabani and Nexilla. No, we don't actually have a physique update from Bekru's, but we got this little arm and shoulders update, let's put it that way, and honestly, to me, Bechros looks probably bigger than all these shows so far, I think they're working on, on bringing him very full, because he's already peeled, he's already super dry and super conditioned every show he did, but he can be fuller in my opinion, he can be a little bit rounder and fuller, and if he's going against Nexilla, who is a freaking mass monster, yeah, he should play his own game and potentially beat him on conditioning, which is going to be better than Exilus, I'm sure, but also he needs to match him size-wise. He can't be dwarfed on that stage. So it's very important in this show to bring Bechrus as full as possible, with conditioning also being as good as possible, and based on what I saw so far, in my opinion, Bechrus is the favorite right after, right with Nexilla. I don't think it's gonna be Nathan or William Bonac who wins this show. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's the way I see it. If you guys see it otherwise, tell me down below in the comment section. And if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more bodybuilding content like this, guys, please stay tuned, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon again, guys. All the best and bye-bye.